Hey adventurers. Hey, so um, I just want to do a quick talk about uh, the bike, what items I think are essential and uh, just a couple of other little notes about this bike and a few, a few questions about uh, this exhaust. So firstly, what is essential on this bike or any bike similar? Um, firstly, a bash plate. You, you have to have a bash plate. You can't just use that tin guard uh, because rocks will punch through those and you will smash your crankcase if you're doing any sort of serious off-road. Uh, I've got a bit of uh, footage of that. Well, boys and girls, this is why you own a bash plate. <laughs> so we come through the river crossing and then notice a whole lot of oil on the ground. And you'll see, you see that dent? That's obviously smashed the case. Now we'll get the belly pan off and have a look. I've punched the sump plug in. That is beyond repair. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That's beyond repair. Really? You don't reckon you can? You can try. And, uh, yeah, that's that's an essential an essential item. Don't don't skip it. The other thing is crash bars. Probably not essential, depending on how many times you want to replace your plastics. I wasn't overly impressed with the OEM um, crash bars because they they mount you know down around here and then they have a loop. That does this and to me a loop when you hit at the top of a loop it's gonna it's gonna bend it's gonna flex you hit hard enough it's gonna go into the plastics what I like about these uh, Outback Motor Tech um, bars and there's a few bars that use a similar um, similar thing is that they come right around the front of the bike and they bolt up to um, you know the main sort of frame of the bike up in here, uh, and um, to me that means that if you have a big enough impact on the side here, it it has to you know it has to rip the whole head stem off the bike, it has to bend a whole lot of stuff. It's just it seems like a very robust uh, thing. So while we're here at the front of the bike, the the low fender. Fine on the road, probably fine a lot of the time. I definitely will be getting a high fender. Um, not only is mud build up a problem, hooligans. Not only is mud build up a problem, but I have ripped a front guard off just by the knobby tires picking up um, sticks blowing across the track and then being pulled up here and then just smashing this thing to pieces. Here, yeah, I've got footage of that happening. Oh. That is a stick. Fuck. I just uh, I ripped my front guard off. What? Ripped my front guard off. Uh, Lucky I got zip ties. Fucking hell. Shit. <laughs> oh god, shit. Now you know why I didn't want to buy that fairing kit. Yeah. Oh, still wood in there. So, also, um, mirrors. Uh, I think... Hi! I think that mirrors, um, something like these... <sighs> double take uh, mirrors or there is a few similar setups where they have a ball joint or a pivot and if you hit something hard enough they they're going to they're just going to swivel out of the way if you use the stock mirrors and you come a cropper a few times you'll do what I did to my 1190 you'll shatter this uh, this mount off and of course that's part of the brake caliper um, or on this side well this one oh yeah, that's part of the uh, clutch lever so, so what did I say brake, brake caliper you don't know what I mean the brake reservoir <laughs> so you're gonna break you know something expensive and then you have to use a ball joint you know maybe with a, a clamp onto the bar or something like that so aftermarket mirrors essential 
Um, and in the same vein, those plastic hand guards, you know, they, they stop some the brush hitting you. But if you if you come off or you're dragging the bike around, you want something you want something metal here. Um, bark busters, whatever. I quite like these RHK branded um, ones just because of the way they mount in here. If I look underneath, you'll see they sort of they come down under the under the uh, levers. And then, and then clamp on in here. The only thing I don't like is that these little nuts rust all the time. But you can replace them with a galvanized or a stainless, well, probably stainless, right? A stainless nut instead of one of these shitty ones. Uh, the one on this side, I did have to shuffle the brake lever across just about five mil to get this this one in here. So, yeah, it's about it up the front of the bike. Now let's talk about this exhaust. So um, to get to get this, I, I like this type of exhaust. I like that it's uh, up out of out of the way. I like that I have much shortened this uh, exhaust pipe hanger uh, where it was. You've seen uh, people have published where they've bent those and then the exhaust moves in and then it clashes with the swing arm, and you've got all sorts of problems. Uh, yeah, so I wanted I wanted that short. Uh, so yeah, I've I've cut mine off and I've welded a plate and a little bracket in here. Uh, I got this done by um, a fabricator who uh, makes exhaust, uh, Peter, good friend of mine, and if we are he's looking at um, yeah doing making a kit so that people can have this this same type. Now you might have seen Camel ADV's uh, system. He likes a pipe that runs parallel with this part of the fairing. And the exhaust comes up here. He talks about it burning the exhaust, uh, the indicator. I just don't like that weird angle that it's on. Um, and then his pipe there, I mean, to be honest, I think it looks cheap and nasty. <laughs> Although I've wrapped this one, which is cheap and nasty. But the, the work on this pipe is actually... Magnificent. Uh, I've got some photos of it um, when it was being made um, and you know we might uh, or Peter might come up with a cover over that or something but yeah if you want this type of setup I've got a Remus pipe which I got off eBay. The Remus is actually 150 mil longer than this um, and we cut it down because it was it was too long. I just got it for a price that I couldn't refuse so, um, so that's the only reason I've got a Remus but you know, you can use any sort of pipe. Uh, we actually, um, oh, Peter's looking at some of these, you know, cheaper eBay type pipes that will will work with a similar setup, um, and so he can he can make a heap of these bends. If you're interested, sure, uh, let let me know. Um, might be something we can uh, organize. Like I said, at the moment this mount is welded, but uh, we might make a clamping system. Um, as well who knows no promises um, I'll get Peter to speak about that uh, in the new year so yeah that's my exhaust completely custom no you can't buy it at the moment um, the the swing arm completely misses the, the exhaust the mount's stiff it's awesome so a couple of things um, about the bike there's a, a guy in the US uh, swanky cat that's been uh, moved up from a KLR I think he's loving the bike uh, and he mentioned it, and there's a Canadian guy uh, that mentioned it. There's been a few people mention it, but they talk about this this um, this bar down here. This is a part of the. This is like a bolt-on section of the frame. It's like a a cradle, and it runs uh, along along here, turns up, and then it bolts up up in here. Um, the the manual says says right here notice do not lift the motorcycle from under the skid plate or by the subframe members now the reason for this is not because these subframe members are piss weak it's because um they're at well firstly you don't want to lift by with a jack on the uh tin stone guard because you will punch a hole through it it's piss weak right so you can't lift it from a point on that you can't lift it um, with so this is the flat type of uh, lifting jack 
and you can't just put this onto these two bars like take take the take the skid guard off and lift it from these bars because these bars are at different levels on each side of the bike one's a bit higher than the other so your bike won't be sitting level and it will slide off the stand or it will fall over that's the reason that they say that you can't lift from this obviously you can lift from this once you've got a bash plate on there you can lift this bike um, oh, but the, the, you know, you might break these bolts. Well, these are M6 grade 10.9 bolts. Uh, they, I think you can even see 10.9 written on them. You can, trust me, it's there somewhere. Um, the, the sheer capacity of an M, uh, an M6 10.9 bolt is 18 kilonewtons, right? That's 1.8 tons. And you've got two of them. So even if you loaded... The bike right at this point on one side 1.8 by 2 that's 3.6 tons you can lift without breaking those bolts uh, if you're lifting it from the middle well you've got uh, one of those each side so double 3.6 so 7.2 tons that will take um, yeah and th this bar I don't know what is that 25 diameter steel tube you, you're not going to bend that um, <laughs> very quickly that's that is completely safe to lift off um it's a bit of a a false rumor i believe <laughs> maybe i'm wrong maybe a yamaha engineer can come and tell me that no 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 that's that's not the reason you'll bend that bar but i'd still call bullshit the other the other thing uh, people ask me oh, so how am i liking my moscow moto gear the tank bag is is awesome um I, I might do a detailed review of that at a later date. I, I really like it. I like that I can take it off and use it as, as a backpack. It's got all my electronic gear in it. This is good. good. This is really good. The saddlebags um, are also really good, but I wanted a rackless system. And um, so I, I didn't want to use any racks. So I just have the bags resting on the plastics. Now this has been, well, you know, it's it works really well. Um, I, I love the bags. I love their setup. I love how easy it is to get gear in and out of them. I love the luggage. However, let's let's have a look at something. If you haven't seen this, um, there's a little seat trick which uh, a couple of people have shown on YouTube, but I. I've done it also. It's awesome. So you take the back seat off. Normally you've got two screws to unscrew here to get the front half of the seat off. What you can do, take those out. Watch this. <laughs> you take those screws out. You take the little uh, uh, sleeves, flip them upside down, and then screw these back in. And you use that to... You put the seat on, and you use that to... Slide that over and then when you put your tail seat on it hooks under the frame and it sits over the top so the front half can never be lifted off uh, and then the, and the back half can't be lifted off so it all locks together no problem um, yeah costs you nothing makes life easy now the problem is that I have a bag sitting on here with a lot of weight so the problem is I have I have the bag sitting on here and there's a fair bit of weight in them, right? So what happened, and hey Josh, you should check your, I know that you have bags sitting on there too. You should check this. On the inside, um, the screws through this bit of plastic here go into very thin little um, uh, sort of raised a, a rib on the, on the plastic fairing and it's thin and mine snapped all on one side all three snapped and on the other side one was cracked the exhaust side actually one was cracked so the exhaust actually protected it um, but yeah the other side they all they all broke and so what I've had to do people will have a fit about this but I've um, glued in epoxy in little ribs to stiffen this uh, this piece, um, the back one. 
Oh, no, the back one, I just sort of uh, filled up the corner with glue. And the front one, again, little, little ribs to stiffen that up. Now, that is nice and strong now. But, um, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not recommending that you run your uh, uh, Rackless um, Moto Moscow or any similar sort of bags just straight on the plastic. The clips are just, they're like road bike material. They're really thin. You, you will break them off. Um, so, yeah, just a word of warning. Um, I've stiffened that up. I am looking at running a little aluminium rib that runs right through here um, that basically ties all that together. Um, you know, it won't weigh practically anything, but um, it'll just make it a whole lot stronger, I hope. Um, and so just before I close everything up, um, this is the exhaust mount. So you can see there's a plate welded on to the two stubs and then a little bracket and um, then the hanger. And this gets this gets the exhaust up really high. This is, I believe this is gonna be about two inches higher than the Camel ADV one. Um, by the time they put on their clamp system, it's all gonna be hanging a bit lower. Uh, this is strong as an ox. Uh, yeah, the only thing is that I've, um, yeah, I've wrapped this because I, I was happy with a wrap. I didn't want um, to put um, a plate over there. Let me just show you where my foot ends up. So that's the normal riding position. Obviously the, uh, motor the motorcycle boots are a bit bigger, um, but even if my t when my toes are back, I think I can just touch it with my boot. So you do sort of want some protection there. Um, only if you ride like this. So in, in sport bike mode, you know, my toes might be often back. Um, Off-road mode, my feet are always forward where I can reach the brake pedal. So um, yeah, yeah, they're about there. And so it goes, goes nowhere near. Yeah, just quickly, I also have got on um, the b and B uh, rack, small compact rack on the back, and the b and B um, tail tidy, which is um, really nice bit of kit, and my bash plate is b and B as well. Um, pump protection phew, I, I don't know, yes, it's possibly a concern. Maybe I'll do something, but boy, would you have to be unlucky for a rock to be <laughs> right here and and smash that. Um, you know, th this holds it off the ground, the crash bars hold it off the ground, the peg doesn't, you know, th everything touches long before this fuel pump, oh sorry, this water pump cover is uh, in the way. So yeah, I don't know if it's such a big concern. Um, I don't know, Ma maybe I'll cover it, maybe I won't. Someone previously had said, oh, well, you can just carry a spare um, water pump cover. It's probably the easiest thing to do. It might be the easiest thing to do. Not not that expensive, I believe. So today is Christmas Eve um, here in Australia. I'll publish this tonight. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone that everyone that celebrates Christmas, and uh, have a great day tomorrow if you don't. Uh, yeah, it's summer here. We're going to get out and do heaps of riding. Uh, I'm really enjoying this machine. Um, yeah, heaps heaps of videos. I've got quite a few recorded already, and going to get out there uh, in the new year and record a few more. So hopefully you enjoy them. Um, stick around. Uh, make sure you, you like and like my videos and subscribe. And uh, if you want to see some more, um, there'll be heaps of action on this. Um, hopefully I won't uh, hurt myself or others on it. And um, we can really enjoy uh, the Australian summer. Uh, thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>And one last thing, um, people, or at least one person has asked me, how's the stickers going after all those river crossings and everything? Well, they're bloody still perfect. The same little crease that I put in there originally is still there. Um, they're all still stuck down. There's no lifting corners. Uh, yeah. Well, I know the... Oh, hang on.
Let's sit this back on here. You know, these are the parts that um, I've had bags um, sitting on and rubbing against. And you know, look, no lifting corners. These yellowing marks, um, they do rub off with a bit of, uh, uh, I can't remember, some sort of cleaning product it did take them off. The white bits tend to get a bit of yellow marks on them when they get rubbed a lot. But uh, no, they're, I'm really happy. Bloody, bloody good. See, even the very pointy bits, they're not, they're not lifting uh, at all. It is rock solid. I'm really happy with it. Good on you, SKDA. Um, thanks. From the Super Adventure Squadron Motorcycle Club. See ya!